In today's video, I'm giving you a tour of my home nursery for baby that is coming in May, and I have an avalanche of crafts, art, and DIY projects that I can't wait to share with you. Hello my friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and yeah, I'm gonna show you around the nursery. I should tell you, I, Chris and I are expecting a baby boy this May. Gosh, ever since we found out we were pregnant in September, I have been working on little projects. The nursery, of course, but also, oh my gosh, so many crafts. I have turned into a one woman toy factory. <laughs> I have dreams of starting a second YouTube channel of just crafts. No time for that, but <laughs> it would be nice. And uh, even though designing a room and creating a home is a huge part of my life, I've never actually shared a room on my channel, so I'm really excited about that. If you've been here a minute, then you might remember when this all started. It didn't start as a YouTube channel, it began as a blog called The 11th Apartment, and that title was a nod to the many apartments that I had had over the years. I love to move, Chris and I both are those weird people that love change and we love moving countries, provinces, cities. So I had had 11 apartments <laughs> and I had made all of them into a home. You know, a fresh coat of paint can do so much. I'm a big believer in not waiting for your forever home. You don't have to make a lot of changes to, you know, have some beauty and comfort in your life. So all that is to say, I'm really excited to share a room finally. And if you do want a little peek into my life and my home style, you can follow me over at shada.style on Instagram because I do share there from time to time. So I thought it would be fun to share a little about how I approach designing a space. That makes me sound like I think I'm profesh, but <laughs> I have kind of three steps. And the first one is always, can I get it found secondhand or thrifted? I am a big believer in participating in our secondhand marketplace, whether it's Value Village or our local shops. Um, the more that we donate and shop at those secondhand markets, the better they're going to be. And I just love that. It's that post-consumer culture where we're all, you know, gaining from each other's treasures and we're not creating such waste. And it's just so much fun. Fun, it is so fun. I love going to a yard sale and digging through someone's stuff. Um, anyways, so I always look for pieces that have a bit of a story. In this room, I got this dresser on the Facebook Marketplace and I did a little makeover, stripped it down to the original wood. I love that raw finish. This Saturday morning, I'm gonna take this baby out on the deck, sand it down. So let's wake my neighbors up. Just kidding, sort of. look so good. The previous hardware obviously left these huge holes, but I was able to find um, cup holes that match the same size. And that was a really good find. I don't know if I could have filled those huge holes, but this is the dresser afterwards. I love that Scandinavian look with the cup pulls and the really raw wood. Getting rid of the finish, it just gives such a modern, simple look. And I also got this little peg rack at Value Village and updated it with a quick coat of paint. I didn't get a before photo. It was basically an ugly, glossy black and a coat of gray paint went a long way. So yeah, four bucks, yay, Value Village. After secondhand stuff, I always think about what I can make and create myself. The secondhand kind of leads us into that because a lot of those turn into little projects. I got this tiny stool from a big box hardware store. It was bamboo, just a quick coat of paint made such a difference on that piece. And then we also got these Ivar cabinets from Ikea. We've got a really small space here, so thinking about vertical storage was really important. Uh, we stacked them and hung them on the wall. I painted them out in a warm gray and added some hardware and that's all it took to really update those Ikea pieces. And then of course I did about a thousand and one craft projects and I'm gonna share all of them with you. Uh, from knitting to sewing, felting and artwork. In my home life, I love to try new things. There's nothing better than a new craft. Uh, Chris and I do leather working, we both knit. I do a lot of felting. Let me show you a few of the things that I made. 
Over the last few months, crafting has definitely become part of my nesting process. And I started off in October with this cute little guy. You can actually find the free pattern for this knitted chick on Pearl Soho. I'll link that in the description. He's so soft. He has a little bean bag in his butt, so he sits nicely on a shelf. And then I went on to knit this baby blanket. I was knitting this around Christmas. This pattern I wrote myself. It's really simple, little tiny blanket. Um, it's made up of all these uh, knots actually and the knots kind of make the pattern. I have a dream of maybe posting this pattern online. Uh, we'll see if I get around to it. I also love to add little leather tags to my knits. If you're a knitter or crocheter, it's a great way to finish your project. And now I can actually hang this blanket on my little peg rack if I like. Uh, it's so squishy and soft. And I also love the way that it looks kind of just hanging over the edge of the crib. At least for now, I just think that's so sweet. I also knit this little friendo, knitting the chick actually gave me the confidence to say like, I could probably write a pattern for a cute little knitted toy. And so I knit this fuzzy lamb. I had a lot of fun kind of puzzling out how to actually create the lamb. And then I got into felting and one of my first projects was this rattle. You can put a cat toy inside and actually make a rattle. And then I made a mobile and uh, it's made up of three little bumblebees and lots and lots of clouds. So you can see the little felted bumblebees. Remember, I have felting tutorials on the channel. And then since I chose to sew all these little clouds, that kind of got me back into sewing. This is one of my first sewing projects for this room. This moon pillow is so cute. Just used uh, some of the linen that you get at Ikea. Make sure to wash it first. That wash linen look is so nice. I did a little very simple embroidery project. I kind of wanted to show this to you guys because it is so perfectly imperfect. You can see my stitching. <laughs> It's quite, it's perfectly imperfect, pretty much sums it up. <laughs> I just wanted to show that because, you know, I always take on these new creative projects and I love to do that when I don't hold myself to a really high standard and that really frees me up to try new things and be creative. And I hope you'll give yourself that same grace when it comes to your art, you know, the weird, the whimsical, that's the best kind of stuff. Perfect is boring. And that leads me into my next project, which was these hand-sewn little uh, stuffed toys. I love how the design of them is kind of a little wrong. They're very flat and two-dimensional. I made a little moose. Um, I made Mr. Bear here. He is so cute. I patterned these myself. You know, I drew them first and then I just used felt, which is really easy to cut and you always get that nice clean edge. And of course I knitted him a little scarf and I think you can see how simple the design really is. And then the third one I created was this owl. This is probably had the most intricate embroidery. I did get to do a bit of fun embroidery on all these little guys and uh, oh, I can't wait to do more. I still have to do a toad or a frog and definitely a fox. Some of you may have noticed my old friend Squeezy hanging out in the nursery here. This giant owl is a knitting project I took on during the start of COVID, another free pattern from the website Pearl Soho. But yeah, I think I found my new passion in life and it's um, creating toys. <laughs> making toys. There's just something so wonderfully and truly creative about drawing something on paper and then bringing it to life through fiber arts, whether it's knit or sewn or whatever. Maybe I will have to start that second YouTube channel after all. And you know what? The theme will still be perfectly imperfect because I love these toys that just look a little funny. It's the, the weird, wonky, like strange perspective and all that that makes these handmade toys have that handmade charm. Okay, another project I really wanna show you is not a toy, but it is this hot air balloon light that I created for the bedroom. There's actually no ceiling light in this room. Um, so here's how I made this. I was actually able to order a paper lantern in the shape of a hot air balloon from Amazon. Then I just got a cord and bulb set at Ikea, found a little basket at Value Village, and I am using a little leather lacing and hot glue to kind of put it all together and complete the project. Um, here's what the hot air balloon paper lantern looked like. I actually had to buy six for 20 bucks, but not bad. And then I cut the bottom off and the basket's a little bit big, but I kind of like that it's, again, a little funny, a little weird. And all I did was glue in four leather laces, um, affix them to the basket and the balloon. And the result was the sweetest little lamp. And um, there it is in the bedroom looking cute. 
Finally, my third step is what can I get at Ikea? Shopping secondhand probably means I've picked up a few uh, antiques and uh, then I've created some stuff myself. Now what can I bring in that has that modern touch to kind of temper it all? I love the way antiques and Ikea go together. And so in here we have an Ikea crib, really inexpensive, um, but beautiful design, as well as the Ivars. And uh, the shelf, the brackets are from Ikea and they're just nice and simple. And that's what I really love is the design tends to be quite pared down. I guess there's no better time than now to show you inside the cabinets, the little organizational porn never hurt. Um, all these baskets are from the dollar store. They're, you know, holding blocks and toys. The wicker baskets are from Value Village. I, oh gosh, this is funny. I got this changing basket from Africa and they sent a rattle and I painted it because I didn't like the color. I know I'm sick. I have problems, um, but uh, I just want things the way I want them. These toys are actually from when I was a little girl and I saved them. I just had them sort of in a bin with all my photo albums all these years and they're the cutest. And then you can see I've got all of my clothing, his clothing, um, stored in baskets and boxes here. You know, when you're shopping thrift, you're not too picky about what size. So I have clothing up to 18 months or even 24 months. So we did a big sort through. Of course, all his little baby newborn stuff is in the dresser. And then I've got storage in the cabinet for clothing that'll be better off, you know, for 2022 or, you know, next winter. And in the bottom Ivar cabinet here, I have, um, gosh, all the little teethers and soothers. I've got bottles sitting in there and the bottom shelf, there's tons of space for a diapers. Oh, and I guess my like secret number four step is to shop local. I love to support local shops, businesses, and just small artists if I can. And you know, shopping secondhand and DIYing a lot of stuff, it leaves me with a budget left over to do that sort of shop small because you can't expect those artists to be selling their stuff off for cheap. So I got this beautiful crib organizer from Etsy. I also ordered the changing table basket um, from a basket weaver in Africa and it came really quickly and I absolutely love it. And then I found a local shop that I just fell in love with. It's here in Halifax and it's called Flower Child. This is not sponsored. They don't know I'm doing this. You may have noticed I kind of go for a bit of a Scandinavian design. I love European products and the toys. And uh, she gets the best stuff from the UK and Europe and Australia. She's got all the coolest international brands that can be really hard to source, even online. And oh my goodness, it's just a treat to go in there and uh, purchase something. I've always loved textiles. Textiles are what I purchase when I'm traveling. And at Flower Child, I bought this beautiful magnolia quilt. Um, picking out baby stuff is just so much fun. And that actually makes me think, I also knit this other blanket. This is more of a crib size blanket. It's a bit larger. I did it in seed stitch. So really mindless, fun knitting, put some tassels on there and did a little color blocking for that big kid feel. <laughs> So let me get up here if I can <laughs> and I'll share some of my other favorite things about this room and show off my wee baby bump. Oh my goodness, I still have so many favorite things to share. First is this whimsical mushroom nightlight from Heiko. They have so many great whimsical nightlights in all sorts of different shapes. I also purchased this area rug. It's a wool cotton blend that's from Wayfair and it's just perfect for a really small space, which this is. I've got some art over here and we'll talk about that later. And then you may have noticed I've got a bunch of baskets and these are both from H&M Home, um, really well priced and this one hanging on the door is the laundry basket. It's easy to kind of fill it as you come and go and then take it over to the laundry room. So super portable. Uh, here on top of the stool, I've got a space where I'm keeping all my burp cloths. I love these muslin burp cloths. Um, they're from Amazon, so I'll link those. I've got lots of room for diapers. All of my receiving blankets are from Value Village. Um, that maybe sounds gross, but I, you know, you wash them and they're so cheap. And then some more organization here. I've got these drawer organizers. I'll link those in the video description and on my blog. And I've been knitting tons of bibs and hats because yes, I'm like a crazy nester. Uh, <laughs> and you can see here kind of the color palette I'm going 
going for a fairly neutral and I've had so many good thrift finds, including this little jumper. So lots of goodies waiting for little man. Now that you've seen how I've organized everything, I guess the only thing left is just this this other wall and I haven't really done anything with it yet. The room is so tiny, I don't wanna clutter it up too much, but I did get this magnetic picture hanger from Amazon. I'll put some canvas or large paper in between it and then that's gonna free me up to do just another fun piece of artwork. To no one's surprise, it was also really important to me to create the artwork that I was gonna use in this room. And I hope that you would do the same. I think making personalized art for a nursery or kids room is just the sweetest thing. And actually, if you have kids, get them to design some of the artwork. So I designed a few different pieces and I'm actually gonna share all of that in Friday's video. So this is coming out on Tuesday. It's just a bonus nursery tour video. And on Friday, I'm going to share some nursery art ideas that are perfect for a kid's room or nursery. So make sure to watch that video on Friday to see what kind of art I use on this little shelf behind me. And for patrons, there's also gonna be a digital download of an art print. Well guys, that was so fun. I really loved showing you around the nursery. I mean, it's been a bit of an obsession around here for me. And it means so much to me that you commented and so many of you really wanted to see a tour and what I've been up to. And that, that just made me feel really special that you cared to see what was going on around here. A uh, couple things, I'm gonna link as many of the products as I can. As I mentioned, a few Ikea things, H&M Home, and definitely check out Flower Child Halifax. They have a great online presence as well. Not all small shops do, so they're quite special in that way, and they have the coolest stuff. And uh, if you're interested in felting, I do have a bunch of felting tutorials and I'll link some of them. Not gonna touch the knitting tutorials yet. I am a bit of a rogue knitter. I'm uh, still a bit of messy with it. But anyway, felting, I do teach that once in a while on the YouTube channel. Okay, I think that's about it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being here and for supporting me. And I can't wait to um, meet our little guy and uh, share that with you as well. Uh, follow me on Instagram at shada.style if you want to see more home stuff and behind the scenes. Follow me at Shada Campbell for all the art goodness. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon on Friday. Bye. <laughs>